Good morning, Team Alabama. We are going to begin reading on page 118. Please join me at this time. Ouch, that hurts. Even Haymitch must know he's been too harsh because his voice softened. Here's an idea. Try acting humble. Humble, I echo. That you can't believe a little girl from District 12 has done this well. The whole thing's been more than you can you ever could have dreamed of. Talk about Senna's clothes, how nice the people are, how the city amazes you. If you won't talk about yourself, at least compliment the audience. Just keep turning it back around. All right, gush. The next hours were, are agonizing. At once, it's clear that I cannot gush. We try me playing cocky, but I just don't have the arrogance. Apparently, I'm too vulnerable for ferocity. I'm not witty, funny, sexy, or mysterious. And by the end of the se session, I am no one at all. Haymitch started drinking somewhere around witty, and a nasty edge has crept into his voice. I give up, sweetheart. Just answer the questions and try not to let the audience see how openly you despise them. I have dinner that night in my room, ordering an outrageous number of delicacies, eating myself sick, and then taking out my anger at Haymitch and at Hunger Games and at every living being in the capital by smashing dishes around my room. When the girl with the red hair comes in to turn, around, turn down my bed, her eyes widen at the mess. Just leave it, I yell at her. Just leave it alone. I hate her, too, with her knowing, reproachful eyes that call me a coward, a monster, a puppet of the Capitol, both now and then. For her, justice might must finally be happening. At least my death will help pay for the life of the boy in the woods. But instead of fleeing the room, the girl closes the door behind her and goes to the bathroom. She comes back with a damp cloth and wipes my, my face gently and then cleans the blood from the broken plate off my hands. Why is she doing this? Why am I letting her? I should have tried to save you, I whisper. She shakes her head. Does this mean that we were right to stand by? That she has forgiven me? No, it was wrong, I say. She taps her lips with her fingers and then points to my chest. I think she means that I would just have ended up an AVOX too. Probably would have an AVOX or dead. I spend the next hour helping the redheaded girl clean the room. And when all the garbage has been dropped down in disposal and the food cleaned away, she turns down my bed. I crawl in between the sheets like a five-year-old and let her tuck me in. And then she goes. I want her to stay until I fall asleep and to be there when I wake up. I want the protection of this girl, even though she never had mine. In the morning, it's not the girl, but my prep team who are hanging over me. My lessons with Effie and Haymitch are over. This day belongs to Senna. He's my last hope. Maybe he can make me look so wonderful no one will care what comes out of my mouth. The team works on me until late afternoon, turning my skin to glowing satin, stenciling patterns on my arms, painting flames designs on my 20 perfect nails and then Venia or Venia goes to work on my hair weaving strands of red into a pattern that begins at my left ear wraps around my head and then falls in one braid down my right shoulder then they erase my face with a layer of pale makeup and draw my features back out huge dark eyes full red lips lashes that throw off bits of light when i blink finally they cover my entire body in a powder that makes me shimmer in gold dust then senna enters with what i assume is my dress but i can't really see it because it's covered close your eyes he orders i can feel the silken inside as they slip it down over my naked body and then the weight it must be 40 pounds i clutch octavia's hands as i blindly step into my shoes glad to find they are at least two inches lower than the pair Effie had me practice in. There's some adjusting and fidgeting and then silence. Can I open my eyes? I ask yes, says Senna. Open them. The creature standing before me is a full-length mirror has come from another world where skin shimmers and eyes flash and apparently they make their clothes from jewels because my dress Oh, my dress is entirely covered in reflective, precious gems. Red and yellow and white with bits of blue that accent the tips of the flame design. The slightest movement gives the impression that I am engulfed in tongues of fire. I am not pretty. I am not beautiful. I'm as radiant as the sun. 
For a while, we all just stare at me. Oh, Senna, I finally whisper. Thank you. Twirl for me, he says. I hold out my arms and spin in a circle. The prep team screams in admiration. Senna dismisses the team and has me move more move around in the dress and the shoes, which are infinitely more manageable than Effie's. The dress hangs in such a way that I don't have to lift the skirts when I walk, leaving me with one less thing to worry about. So already for the interview, then, so already for the interview then, asks Senna, I can see by his expression that he's been talking to Haymitch and that he knows how dreadful I am. I am awful, Haymitch. Call me a dead slug. No matter what we tried, I couldn't do it. I just can't be one of those people he wants me to be, I say. Senna thinks about this for a moment. Why don't you just be yourself? Myself? That's no good either. Haymitch says I'm...